give me the child. Through dangers untold and hardships unnumbered, I have fought my way to the castle beyond the Goblin City to take the child that you have stolen. For my will is as strong as yours, and my kingdom is as great. For my will is as strong as yours, and my kingdom is as great. Damn. Ooh. I can never remember that line. You have no power over me. Lovies, and welcome to a very special Witchy Wednesday. I have been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. I know a lot of other people do. I don't know if most of us have gotten the pre-orders today um, and not like prior to today. So there might be a video out there of this um, unboxing. I'm just so excited. So I haven't looked at any other videos. I haven't even source them out or search for them or looked at like any cards. The only cards that I know of are the ones on the cover and the back, but here it is. I'm so excited. I love, love, love the labyrinth. I, I feel like I can do like a 30 page thesis on just the different sides of this movie, a little bit of deeper dive. So I'm gonna try not to do that as much as possible in here because I really want to make sure I give like a really good review of the cards and not so much the movie and the plots and how I feel about certain scenes or how I feel about certain characters. Like I can go on about that. I absolutely love The Labyrinth. I watched it really every day as a kid. Like I came home and wanted to watch Labyrinth every single day. That and Legends was like my mystical movies growing up and it probably explains a lot. But we are going to dive into this baby that is highly anticipated. I'm really, I have a lot of expectations for this um, and I hope that it doesn't let me down. Um, I love the artwork. So we're gonna go through the guidebook real quick. Not gonna do a deep dive on the guidebook either. I really want to look at the cards, not try to put my RWS spin on it. I really just wanna see it for face value, the message that it gives us. Um, and then we'll wrap it up and see if you have any comments, any thoughts. Do you agree, disagree? Leave them below. So we are unboxing the Labyrinth Tarot Deck and Guidebook. If you're interested in this, then keep on watching. Okay, so first off, I'm really happy with the size of the box. I do love a good um, size in my tarot cards. I'm not, it's like a pocket person or small card person. I love my tarots um, really big and I love them when they're big and borderless because I often try to cut my borders off and that really leaves the cards small. So if these are borderless, which I don't know, yeah, they have borders, but let's see if they're able to be cut off. We'll kind of review that towards the end, but I love the box. I love the original text and font and it's raised. Like there's certain parts of this that are really shiny, which I love. Like the owl is raised, text, even like the insight edition, if you can see, yeah, you can see there it's shiny and raised, like a lot of detail. Love the eyes of the maze. Art by Thomas Hillo. It's great. Words by Minerva Siega, Siegel. Cycle. I love Didymus and Ludo there. The worm. Interesting character. I have a lot to say about the worm, but um, Forward by Brian. I love this. I love this. Froud. Brian Froud. So really the sides of the box kind of tell it's like a really nice story in itself. Really cool. Really key characters of the story. I'm so excited, <laughs> kind of a little nervous because I'm telling you guys, I really have high, high hopes. I've been I've been waiting for this for so long. I think some of you are even waiting for my video to open it up with me. So that gives me kind of a little bit of nervousness all on its own. Inside is uh, purple, 
which is nice. Nice um, kind of box here. Okay, the guidebook is really nice and big. This is the guidebook here, sides. One of the knockers, love that. So cute. So let's see. There's a couple things that I look for in a guidebook. So A is color. B, um, you know, how much how much information they give per card. So are they giving keywords? Are they really going into it? A lot of people will say to kind of take the guidebook and throw it out, which I absolutely don't ever, ever, ever suggest that. I feel like the writer, the artist, they have their own reasoning for doing the things that they've done, drawing it in a way, using their characters in a way that they see it. I feel like it's always good to take the creators in like what they envision to mind. And when you get used to the, a deck, then you can kind of take the guidebook aside and go with your own thoughts and feelings. I feel like to take a guidebook and completely chuck it and look at the cards for face value is so discrediting the writer and the artist, but that's my pure opinion. So this is the guidebook. I see that it's color. Sometimes I like the, the spreads that they do. Um, you know, to keep it fun and different. So they give you an introduction, understanding the tarot, just typical things, the major arcana. I'm not gonna go through this too much, but um, we'll see that they give a short blurb about the full upright reverse. I don't read reversals, so a lot of this doesn't pertain to me, but not much here, right? So only kind of what they want you to get the overall essence of the card and then they will leave whatever is up to your imagination or your feelings and thoughts about the card in general. So let's look at the first one. We have Sarah Williams, kind of just, this is the opening scene, which is great. I think the opening scene is perfect for the feeling of the deck and it really does re resemble a fool, right? It's the representation it's a pure representation of the fool so just like she's in fantasy and she's kind of right before the the plot and the story begins she's in a fantasy world really not kind of there with reality not in touch with what's happening really all in her head but the fool is about the journey and so is sarah's part in this movie is really starting that journey so i think if there's any scene to represent a card, the opening scene with Sarah as the Fool is perfect. So let's see here. The Fool represents someone is about to take their first steps in a life-changing adventure. Exactly. It's a journey. The whole tarot, tarot experience, the whole deck is really the Fool meeting everyone in their major arcana and then coming to an end where they have grown and they have learned. And throughout that, he's able to work his way around through the minors. That's what the Tarot really is all about. It's the fool's journey. So, um, so Sarah is about to take her first steps on a life-changing adventure. Sarah, like the fool, is trusting is trusting and a little naive as she starts out on her quest through the Goblin's King's Labyrinth to save her baby brother, Toby. So that's what they kind of give you. I'm gonna look, take a look at the minors because the minors, sometimes in guidebooks, they dummy it down and fit more and they really kind of go in depth with the majors. So the star, oh, the star is Lancelot. How cute. I have my Lancelot here with his red bow. So, so cute. So, okay, I like this. I like how they, they also give a one page of this. You can actually take this and study if you really, really love this deck. And they give you the one page for text. I wish it was more. Like, I wish there was more to say about the fool um, in this, you know, but we take what we have. So, love the guidebook. Really, really good. So here's a full, I think, wow, these cards are not even in a different type of plastic. It's just straight cards, which is nice. And Donald had to fiddle with it a little bit. And then you have the stripes, which is like um, Toby's, um, his little like onesie footy pajama, super cute. So you have just this little rope, take it out of the tuck. Let's look at the card stock. Really nice. And it's really nice and matte. No fingerprints, I love the back. This is the uh, the four guard 
doors that she encounters. Love this. Super awesome. I love how they captured the symbols of Alf, Ralph, Jim, and Tim. Really, really cute. Those are the four guards that guard these two doors within the movie. So really, really cool. So car stock is good. Love the back. It's really a riddle that if you've never seen the movie, and I can't believe that anyone is watching this has never seen the movie, but um, it's a really cool riddle and it's, she figures it out. So, well, does she? <laughs> So let's take a let's take a look at the cards. I'm gonna bring you guys in and we'll just do it one by one and get my first reactions. Okay, so the first one we see is the fool, which we already explained. This really resembles um, the fool and Sarah Williams' journey into um, kind of the labyrinth. This is the park. I love how her fantasy clothes are over her mundane clothes, which is really, really nice. It kind of separates the fool between the mundane and the spiritual and trying to get that spiritual enlightenment. So really cool. Love um, the spirals, kind of like already getting that feel of a labyrinth. I love walking labyrinths and, you know, spirals and things like that kind of remind me of that. The real true essence of a labyrinth is to walk it, get to the middle, do some self-reflection, and when you come out, you know, you should feel more relaxed and more aware, which is exactly what happens in the labyrinth. So the magician, amazing, is the Jareth, the Goblin King. So he has his crystal, he has his snake, um, and this is kind of what he uses to, um, you know, it's kind of like a scare tactic when he meets Sarah for the first time. You have all the goblins. Love. I love this. So just like a magician, he has his tools, his goblins, his snake, his crystal ball to kind of get what, you know, he is wanting. Since the card is really up close and I'm taking a look at his clothing and his garments, um, I'm noticing that his necklace isn't here let me just make sure maybe this is it right here so i only point that out because a necklace plays a pivotal role into who jareth is right so the necklace it almost has like a like a, a downward type of hunter moon and then the middle emblem here is an infinity sign which you know is portraying the concept of limitless or eternity it reminds us to be conscious of who we are where we are and the endless possibilities we have before us so i feel that like jareth is all about that type of possibility and i love that infinity sim symbolism within his necklace so i think that's that right there I think that's what that means to be because this looks like his necklace right there. So that's that. The next card is the High Priestess and this is Zitzi. This is one of the goblins. I don't know how I feel about this. A High Priestess is such a, a really respected and important card in the Tarot. And I feel it's all about that insight. I understand that she has the scroll and she keeps it in her bag and things like that, but I wouldn't have put the high priestess as Sitsi. Like, I wouldn't say is Sarah either. I would have to think about who would be a better replacement for this, but I'm a little bit I'm a, I'm a little bit disappointed with the high priestess that they chose here. The Empress is the mother which is really awesome. The Empress, the dad, love Toby, and he has the milk and kind of, um, you know, is all about, um, you know, is ruled. I love how he's still in a red chair, really nice. Kind of the ruler, power, um, scheduling, timing. So that kind of makes sense that when he wants to speak with Sarah, it's important that he does what he needs to do and continues on with his night with the Empress and the timing that they have. I, they're going to a show or something like that. So it's really important that he remains on time, which is really the perfect emperor type of thing. The Hierophant is Hoggle, which is awesome really cute this is when we first meet him and he's um killing off all the fairies 
right in the entrance. You can see the entrance here to the labyrinth. Really, really cool. The dancers as the lovers. I love this. And this is the mask that you often see that's not Jareth and it's not obviously Sarah. And there's another mask that follows them around. I have a lot to say about the dream sequence. I have a lot, like, it's very, very, very interesting to me when I've literally watched that scene, that whole dream sequence, and I kept pausing it and kept pausing it because I realized certain things that are in that dream sequence, but really awesome. I love the dancers. Um, I love their affection for one another. It's really, really cool. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, this is like, I don't want this to be such a long video, but I don't know if I will pick the lovers from the dream sequence. I feel that are, I mean, it's not the lovers, it's really the dancers, but the way that the dream sequence works, I feel that it's not like harmonious. It's almost, it's very dark. And when we, and if we get there, I'll explain, but um, maybe I would have chosen, um, I would have even chosen Sarah and, and the Goblin King as maybe the lovers, you know, or something like that. Um, but this is the dancers. Let me see what they have to say about that. Cause I'm really intrigued. Let's see. The dancers, dancers represent two people perfectly in step with one another, beautifully, blissfully dancing through life. But that's not what's happening in the dream sequence. They're they're all kind of in a fog, in a haze, in a in a drug kind of seduced state. Whereas they're they're really seducing each other and dancing and frolicking and kind of living in a world that is kind of chaos, but beautiful chaos and not letting you know the world is falling down and they're not giving any care about it that's really the the nutshell of the dream sequence and i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily say that they are lovers in sequence i feel like they don't care about each other almost but i digress um the chariot as didymus and ambrosius so cute love the artwork i adore the artwork and i really love the text too is kind of like Pamela Coleman Smith, like pixie type of, like I'm getting that type of vibe, which I really, really respect and love. So did a miss and he's in the bog of eternal stench because you can see the rocks here, really cute. So it kind of tells you that Ambrosius is really the chariot that's getting him to safety because you don't want to step foot in this. And you can tell that's like one of those like little awful farts there. So you have the goblin for strength, which is really, really cool. This is when um, they get into the town, into the center of the castle. Um, the hermit as the wise man. Love that. It's perfect. I can't get over the artwork. It's such beautiful lining is his, um, his beard, his nose, all the whiskers, really cute. Leave a contribution. The wheel of fortune. How awesome is that? Whereas all of um, Sarah's lipstick marks, but they kind of are ever turning and ever changing. And that's exactly what the Wheel of Fortune is. You kind of go through life and, you know, create your own kind of destiny without trying too hard. And I think that's how the situation played out. At once she kind of saw that this wasn't working, she kind of let her intuition step in and that's kind of the name of the game here justice as the hands i love this this is so good so good justice the hands she falls they give her the option of going up or down she chose down she chose down like so good like it's your choice justice i love the fact that especially the fact of being a free will and getting that justice card, it's up to you to make your decisions and control very much like the Wheel of Fortune. The Hanged Man, of course, is Ludo when he gets saved by Sarah. And they're like kind of, the goblins are kind of getting him with like those, those little sticks with the eating things on the, in the end. So good. Ooh, fate. 
This is so good. I love this so much. I love the the light. This is Jareth um, incognito or dressed kind of as um, like, you know, a peddler in the oubliette. So he kind of has like his his cup. I love that. So it's it's fate, right? You're in the oubliette. They get caught. How do they escape? You know, it's all about fate. That's great. Temperance, so good. The knockers. And, um, you know, um, hmm. I feel like with Temperance, maybe it would have been awesome for the rings to kind of maybe interlock. I know that they don't, but it would have been nice. Like, I love how this ring, I thought they were kind of going into his ears. That would be cool because Temperance is an ebb and flow. So the fact that the two knockers are down, I mean, it's, I love it. I love the idea, but it would have been nice if like the rings were interlocking, then it would have been like a true temperance card, which is nice. Demon, the fireies. Yes, 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 and yes. One thing I will say, I don't know it, but I hope that the devil card is the fireies because they are so dark. And a lot of people like skim over this song because maybe it's not their favorite or the whole scene I've heard from many is not their favorite, but the fireys are really not good. And what they stand for is also really not good. So <clears throat> the demons popping off your head. Um, I know when in the song, right? They're talking about not having problems, not having a suitcase, and don't have any clothes to worry about. Like they don't have any clothes, any jewelry, any real estate, but you know, you take off your head and you get down with the chilies and they party till they glow. That's basically what the the song is. So it's 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 so dark. Like to me, I kind of take it there where it's like you don't have anything going for your life. You don't care about your clothes. You don't care about your money. All you do is want to kind of hang with people who are not good for you. And, you know, popping off your head kind of like saying like, screw it. It doesn't matter to me anymore. I'm not going to think about it. And I'm just going to party until I glow. Like that's a very like... I don't want to say drug because at the end of the day, it really is a kid's film. But if you want to take it there, you can, because it's very all about um, like maybe even possibly addiction inducing. Um, they say like when things get tough and your chin is dragging on the ground and even if things look down, it's like bad luck. You know, that's the, that's like more of the the song. Like, so I love the fact that they're demons. I, I hope that the fiery scene is um is a devil because that would be perfect it's all about temptation all about kind of like gambling partying and getting lost with people who do that instead of waking up and getting the true like life and things that's how i see the fireies <clears throat> the tower beautiful love this castle really awesome the star we saw is lancelot really cute and this is like his enclosure from the movie too where he sits the moon the peach really awesome that's so interesting the moon as the poisonous peach really emotion right i mean it could be it could have that emotion because the moon is what induces the dream sequence and that's all raw emotion. And we'll, you know, hopefully I get a chance to kind of go over my thoughts about the dream sequence. And the sun is that pure joy. We have Toby Williams, really cute. We have the sunflowers, just so cute. I love the sun here. Wow. But of course, it's happiness. Um, you know, I I feel like you don't really see Toby like exactly the happiest baby is either crying or running away or just kind of being tossed around but i love um i love this this is perfect very rws judgment we have alf ralph jim and tim so love this all about um rules um the judging of which way to go 
Are we lying? Are we telling the truth? How do we get there? Things like that is perfect. The world is the labyrinth. Perfect. Love this. And I love the goblins here too. Oh my God. Really, really good. I think um, with everything else being said, great start to the deck. First, we have the King of Poles, which I'm assuming is going to be Wands. So this is great. This is that character that you see when Sarah is wishing, you know, her um, her brother would go away. So he's the one that says, "I doesn't even start with I wish." Or so he's in that like crew of goblins there. Queen of Poles, another goblin queen here. Really awesome. I love that it has her heads on stakes and stuff like that. The Queen of wands or i would think that these are poles here it's a very awesome queen um very like uh brave and strong and creative and definitely sets out to you know hard worker and sets out to um to accomplish and very determined so this um, makes sense i love the spirals here knight of poles you see this character at the fight scene Really cool page of poles. Um, this is one of the goblins. This is what they use to uh, lure um, Ludo, which is awesome. So, you know, he's a page, not so much here yet. Maybe, you know, they're kind of using him or, you know, he's kind of learning his rope. So right now he's just in charge of Ludo. He isn't, isn't there yet as far as a knight or the king or the queen. So, all right, an ace of poles, really cool. Love that artwork. Okay, so we have two of poles. Oh no! Oh no! This is a very like Marseille style. I really, I'm not a fan of this type of simplicity. I love to have scenes especially in the minors and this is what it looks like it's going to be so i can't really even give you a uh, like a kind of review on this i'm so for me personally i know a lot of people would love this i'm really really disappointed really disappointed this is like not again i i really only stick with rws and very much like um a nightmare before christmas every minor had a scene so it was really easy to see it was really easy to relate back to um the movie and kind of get your thoughts on the card and get a message from what you're seeing in the card and relate it to the movie and see how it relates to the question that you're going through. relate to see how it works with your um your layout and things like that so this is really i'm not a reader of this style type of tarot it's hard for me to even tell you like how i feel about this i would really have to work with it and kind of meditate on it um let's see so i'll just show you what these are and you know if if any if any feeling comes to mind um i'll point them out but for now this is i'm really drawing a blank because i don't really read like this but i do love the artwork on the sticks i love the fabric um the poles the colors the colors can say something too seven eight interesting nine and ten oh no i'm so disappointed in that i really wanted to go really hard <laughs> i wanted to go in on the movie and the cards and see how how it all relates it's such a missed opportunity so let's keep going okay king of junk what's junk let's see well i can tell what junk is right from like let's just see i don't want to go too far let's go to the numbers oh i can't tell you because there's no really true symbology okay so let's see here uh junk 
Actually, let's go back. I want to give this a chance. I want to get this one. So let's just see here. So 10 of wands. Let's just see. I really do want to love. I really want to love this. Okay, X of poles. Accomplishments often come with important responsibilities. You may be feeling overwhelmed um, by the by your duties or your workload. Be diligent. Some of that will make things more manageable. You don't have to do everything on your own. Let others pull the weight and play their part. So I can get that from this. A lot of different colors, shapes, sizes, different ways of the poles are. Like they, they function in different things. One is maybe to like beat something. Um, one is maybe to, you know, this is to kind of maybe like almost like a polo stick to kind of um, hit something to make it go. Uh, like this can be something, a stick that you dip and you have kind of like a torch. I get it. So like a lot of, you know, there, there's a lot to say here. Um, and it says accomplishments, um, you know, and it could feel overwhelming. And when I see all of these, I could get a sense of overwhelming, but I don't, I, I wish this was something that I can relate back to the movie. If this was a regular tarot deck, yes, I understand, but you're giving us something that is licensed and meant to coincide with the movie. Like this is a, uh, I, this, th even the upright definition of this card has nothing to do with the movie. It's just a feeling or, you know, uh, what the artist and the writer wanted you to get from the, the 10 of poles. Oh, it was so disappointing. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so junk, king of junk. Let's see. Okay, so as the suit of junk is associated with the element of earth, so here we go, this is pent pentacles. So, all right, so pentacles are really that we know is the laborers, is the 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 hardworking people, the ground dwellers. So it's really interesting that the worm is is um is the key player here. Um the worm to me is a fascinating, fascinating character. Um, I wish he had red eyes. So, because I feel like the worm is not as cute and cuddly as everyone would think. Um, I think he is a, a liar and I feel that he's very dangerous. Um, offering Sarah the tea it was probably a ploy to get her to um, run out of time very much like the poison peach was. So, and I and I feel that you know, I say that he's a liar because she says, hey, do you know your way through the castle? And he's like, oh, no, me, I'm just a worm. But he really does. He would have said if she would have kept going down the way, which is the right way, like to her right, if he would have, she would have went down that way, she would have led straight to the castle. So you do know your way around this. So King of Earth is someone that maybe in this card for this particular deck is, you know, he uses his manipulation in a way that, you know, um, encourages people to do things. He's very powerful. He knows what he's doing um, and things like that. So I think that there was no misses. <laughs> I never thought there was a misses. I always find it weird that, oh, you know, come in and meet the missus. How would Sarah get there? You would give her uh, a tea that would cause her to have some hallucinations that maybe she can think very much like Alice in Wonderland. So that's my thoughts on the worm. I think it's pretty much an evil character after doing some deep dives and not as cuddly and cute, but really smart. And that's what a king would do, right? Really play on his intelligence and his, and his surroundings to kind of get a result. Queen of junk. It's perfect. This is a junk lady. Super cute. Looks just like her. This is me in real life, I swear. But then you have Lancelot. Really all the things that that pop out to me that I would see in the movie were really awesome. Knight of Junk. This is right at the beginning of the fight when uh, the rocks are starting to help Sarah and the gang, which is perfect. That's a knight just trying to help, um, really using Earth as, you know, um, to his advantage. And then the page of junk, it's another goblin. Really, really cute. And then ace of junk. Still looks like a wand. Like this looks very much like a wand. Or like the poles. 
like what would be the difference they look unless they're really meant to look alike which i can understand that so okay so this is the ace of junk really awesome and then we have a uh, pentacle I love how um, you can see the destruction of the wands, the knife, the beats, really cool. Four, five. Wait, wait. We didn't have a deck or a devil card. Wait, 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 wait. Because I'm still thinking about the fiery moon, the star, the tower, the demon. Oh, the demon was the devil. So I got what I asked for. What was death? Fate. Death. Fate. Going and getting um, the cleaners through the uglia. Okay. Death and then coming out. I don't know if they came out. That's so weird. But... I got what I asked for. I don't know why I didn't put that together at in the beginning. So I kind of explained the devil with the fireies and it happened to be the demon and it was a fiery. So I got what I wanted there. Very interesting. Okay, let's, I just, I'm like, I just remembered that. Okay, so um, it goes like turnips and things like that. So that's six, seven, eight. nine i really have to work with these cards to really and and work with the um the guidebook to um to get um a real feel of how they wanted us to interpret this so feathers is air so i'm gonna go on a hunch and say that represents the uh swords which is my favorite um suit let's see feathers cunning tactical intelligent the king of feathers oh no this is a suit of feathers I see? yeah um feathers is a powerful leader renowned so this is a suit of feathers okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna assume that these are it's like very much like um like i'm gonna assume that these are um for these swords because you have earth which is your pentacles you have swords which is your air wands as your fire and cups as water so um let's see let's just go ahead and see this is still Pots, yeah, cups. Okay, so water. So this is this is would be your swords. So the king of feathers, a king of swords, is a Jareth or an owl. I would think that this is Jareth, which is great. Queen of feathers is one of the Fae. Really great. Knight of feathers. Awesome. Page of feathers. I love these. I love these like strange animals. So awesome. And the ace of feathers. So cute. Love this. I just love the artwork too. I love that line drawing. Okay, so two of feathers. Okay, so like this kind of makes sense, you know, the two. So you're, it's like a divided. And I love how this could represent the blindfold if you were still trying to relate this to RWS, which I, I suggest that you shouldn't. Um, but this is also relatable to that. Um, decisions, you know, upwards, downwards. I can, I can understand it. But that's because I only know RWS style very well. Like, you know, I don't think that's meant for this. So maybe it has a different meaning, but... Three, love the colors here. Really good cards to try to meditate and really see, you know, how did, um, like how would it make you feel? Do you get any aggression from it? How does the colors make you feel? The movement, where the feathers are, does that, does that give you any type of, you know, feeling or insight or things like that? 
really cool. Seven of feathers, eight of feathers. So this is eight of feathers. After I've done some thinking um, and can work with it a little bit more, I can give you my thoughts and see if my, um, my first impressions change. All right, so king of pots, this is cups. This is working off emotions. Um, the king of pots, really cute. And I think they probably made up some characters, obviously, for this. Like, I don't know all. I have I know the Labyrinth, and I've done some deep dives on myself and spent a lot of time kind of researching things and things like that. But I don't know, like, every goblin's name, or I don't even know. I think they may have even introduced, like, new goblins. Like, this person doesn't look familiar to me at all. Or maybe she's in the end scene and I missed it. But um, Knight of Pots, super curious. Look how cute he is. Love this. I love I love how it looks like a cannon that just got shot, but he's looking into it. It's almost like it's such a novice thing to do as a knight, you know? It's like that's not something that you, it's very smart to do. But, you know, still in battle, still learning, still trying to make his way up that ladder. And then the page of pots, so cute. I do remember this little guy. Ace of pots really cool and two two cups three cups three pots the four of cups is a very strong tarot card very strong and you know kind of um really appreciating what you have when it's right in front of you and not like you know idolizing something else that you know it's it's not doing you any good and I don't like you know I again I don't see that in here I don't see I I don't see much of anything as of yet so those are my true true impressions and I will be honest I'm just not that type of reader but someone will probably really 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 love this and I think after this I might I'm going to post this and then I'm going to see what others say about it and it pr can give you a whole different <laughs> a whole different outlook. This is probably not the video for you to get, you know, really true thoughts. I mean, it's my true thoughts, it's just maybe not the way that they should be read. Uh, here is the 9 of pots and the 10 of pots. So there you have it. So that is the labyrinth. Um Again, strong, strong majors. I like this really set me up. Like I was like, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to kind of bring my theories, um, you know, to to light. What I'm really disappointed is that they didn't really show the de the dream sequence that much. I think the dream sequence is only in the dancers, and I think that's it. And it's funny because I see this image here in the box, which is part of that. Oh, and it's actually not. This is not her dress. So that's not part of the dream sequence. But I bring that up a lot because the dream sequence is one of another part of the movie that's really dark. When I looked at the background and I forgot about what was happening and I just let the song go, you really look at everyone around you and the dream sequence to me is all about the seven deadly sins. You'll see pride there. A lot of women with mirrors, looking at themselves with mirrors, looking at themselves with Jareth with mirrors. You had the, the greed, which is excessively drinking and lust, kissing and promiscuous sexual dancing. You have envy, which is Jareth um, is the envy with many women trying to get to him and his enviness of Sarah. You have gluttony. If you look in the back, there's so many people like w on a table by themselves um, with a bunch of drinks and food and it's all by themselves with a whole table full of that. Like that right there shows you gluttony. Um, there's wrath. There's sloth. Like the entire dream sequence in itself is really conducive of sloth like a, of a person like that is portraying sloth there's a lot of pillows um and setups associating with like non-motivating people or neglect it's a whole kind of altered state of reality that has no repercussions or responsibility to help someone in need and that's sarah so 
something that strong, you right? Something that strong, maybe that should have been fate. Like instead of using the, this this character in the oubliette, maybe the dream sequence with everyone dancing would have been fate because you're surpassing all of these deadly sins. You're surpassing even wrath. Like wrath is the malice um, directed towards an innocent person, right? So at the end of the dream sequence, it's the definitive example that, you know, bullying and, and hating and hate towards, um, towards Sarah, like that's portraying malice. Like you're going through all of those sins to get out, to wake up, to see, like, you know, to take advantage of breaking the mirror and getting out of it. Like that's more fate than this character that's really Jareth and the Oubliette. Like that's, it's not strong if that makes, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't take, um, it doesn't take that character and blow it up. And that's what I was really looking for. I was looking to see all the different symbologies and all the different things about the movie and what makes the movie tick, what makes the movie somewhat mature for mature audiences and capture that in the cards. And it really doesn't, but uh, really strong majors. Okay, minors, you know, I love that they did the worm and things like that. I can, I can explain some of my theories on that. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to work on this a little bit and then get back to you. Um, and everything else is really, really awesome. So I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Um, and I want to thank everyone here who is a member who contributes to this channel monthly. So I'll do a really awesome low key chill. I kind of want to do the members only, um, videos that way. Very chill, you know, maybe sitting on my couch and kind of just chit chatting with you guys instead of like an overly edited thing. So we're going to go over my tarot collection. We'd love to get your feedback and then, um, happy mail for full moon members are going out soon too. So really fun. We have our contest, um, that ends on Friday, the 20th, and then I'll be posting about the winner for that too. Lots of people who have um, entered in the Curio contest. I really want to thank you for that. I've been loving seeing everyone's contributions and creations and things like that. So really awesome. And that's it. So that is the Labyrinth. I hope you guys enjoyed. On to the next one. Bye.